Sanjeev Narain of ICICI Prudential joins in to talk about that. Narain, afternoon, it looks like the market has got much more steam left to it before we're done with this rally. Yeah, actually, we were expecting that if crude oil goes up, Indian markets could go down. And uh, that was the way the market behaved between November and uh, February to an extent. But uh, in recent times, crude oil has been going up and the market has also been going up. So that's, uh, that's uh, but I think, uh, you know, when uh, considering that I don't think we got it right, I think uh, what uh, factors people say is uh, attributable to the fact that on those two days following the Japanese earthquake, uh, there was uh, the equivalent of a QE3 where a lot of money was pumped out in two days by the Reserve Bank of Japan and that seems to have resulted in a big rally in gold, silver, and uh, most stocks uh, all over the world. Mm. Afternoon, Naren. Uh, what's your sense? I mean, fundamentally, are we getting stretched then, driven by this liquidity, or do you think fundamentals might justify this kind of prices in uh, post earnings season? See, fundamentals, as uh, as mentioned on the basis of, let's say, Sensex earnings or earnings, looks reasonably okay. It was okay even uh, at 5400. It was obviously much better at 5400, but even now it is not a case for a big worry. I think uh, the way the Indian market is that, you know, when crude oil goes up, all the losses are not booked in the earnings of the corporate India or the, the losses are all booked only on government account. And therefore, you know, Sensex earnings doesn't get affected in any way. And uh, therefore, we have a situation where I think uh, the crude oil uh, factor is being absorbed by the government. And therefore, you know, when you look at fundamentals, when you look at corporates, there is no sign of a very big worry at this point of time. But if you factor in, let's say, petrol, diesel prices, if they were not to be subsidized, then I think uh, you have a problem in fundamentals then. Otherwise, corporate earnings shouldn't disappoint because in any case, the losses are being borne by the government of India. On the point you were making about liquidity, uh, where there seems a question mark is, is on whether or not there is still more to come from that liquidity interest. You keep an eye on the flows from the Far East. What's the sense you're getting? I don't think anyone got this flow itself right. I don't think anyone can get <laughs> such flows right because uh, when QE2 happened, people expected that in the next three months you'll see a lot of flows to emerging markets. Actually, it didn't happen. Uh, QE3 or as it is called now, what happened in Japan is something that no one expected and the money seems to have gone into commodity. So I think it's a very difficult call. I mean, uh, what we had thought of is that a crude oil drop would be benefit beneficial for India and a crude oil rise to about 120 would be negative for India. But uh, what seems to have happened is that a crude oil rally has actually, and all commodities have rallied, and almost all global markets have also rallied in recent past. So that's where we are today, and I think uh, you know, I think what you will get a sense is uh, as to because we are towards uh, two more months, we've got two three months for QE2 to end. How uh, the U.S. government uh, views whether they want to expand QE2 or they are going to actually stop QE2 and uh, what kind of uh, political stalemate happens in Libya because we are all expecting that there will be some partial resolution of the civil war which is happening in Libya. So all these things would be factors which will play on on flows. From a market point of view, markets are um, not cheap, they are not very costly, but they are not price for crude. So is it primarily a liquidity call, Naren, at this point? Uh, I mean, how do you connect it to fundamentals? Uh, would you start worrying about it right now or would you say it's fine, uh, it doesn't matter that prices have moved 10-12% despite some of the headwinds? Now that's why, you know, for a long period of time we've been recommending a fund like our dynamic plan which actually keeps selling on rallies and buying on falls. And uh, it's that kind of fund which manages to benefit from all the volatility which is in play at this point of time. Uh, and uh, by going forward, it also appears that, you know, no one will be able to correctly predict liquidity and therefore markets will remain quite volatile. Uh, and uh, therefore, you know, the opportunity comes from actually playing volatility correctly and uh, for people who are day traders, uh, the, the opportunity is there to trade because there is huge volatility but they have to make money the right way. That's going to be the challenge for them. 
I think yes, we are in into a range-bound kind of markets. Uh, it doesn't appear that you know markets can go off fly substantially off. Uh, the next, uh, while I don't think there's anything much negative which will come out of any corporate earnings, I think uh, the first estimate of monsoon is expected in the next 10 days. Uh, that we hope will be nearly normal. And uh, consequent to that, you know, you're going to see big events uh, on the domestic side primarily uh, as monsoon because uh, otherwise the global events are going to dominate all the event, all what is happening because of what is happening in Libya and what can happen in other parts of the world like Japan and US. Mm. How, are you, how are you positioned in IT as a sector uh, given what's coming up on Friday from Infosys, the guidance for the, for the full year? See, IT is a very defensive sector at this point of time. I think the outlook for growth is extremely good. But uh, having said that, uh, on an absolute basis, we've been feeling now for the past uh, six months that the sector is kind of absolute basis price fully. And there are no big upsides in uh, large cap IT. On the mid cap side, there are extremely attractive opportunities. But as you know, mid cap IT has not done well for years and therefore the, they could be value traps and therefore the amount of work that you need to do to actually uh, pick up the right stock out of the mid cap IT is going to be quite a challenge. So at this point of time, large cap IT, no big absolute upsides, uh, uh, relatively a safe investment. Uh, mid cap IT, good absolute upsides exist but a lot of research is required. Mm -hmm. Didn't get a chance to speak to you after the mutual fund data was released, Nirin, but yours was one of the funds that actually pulled the, the largest amount of inflows this time round. Uh, are people choosing now domestically to start putting the money in or are people still sitting on fairly high cash levels? No, I think, uh, you know, clearly I think, uh, you know, the way the market evolves is that, you know, you have a situation where uh, investors have started to sell on, uh, sell or redeem mutual funds at new high. Uh, that has benefited them very significantly because if you know the previous quarter, October to December, we all saw huge outflows. A part of it has come back and we have this good encouraging trend which I've seen over the last two years of money coming on all declines and going on all sharp rallies out of the mutual fund industry and I think as the mutual fund investor makes more and more money out of this kind of strategy I think uh, they would be uh, very happy with the mutual funds I think our, uh, I mean I think we have a good suit of products uh, like for example we have this defensive product which I was talking to you about the dynamic product and we have a good suit of products and I think people with all the people with a good suit of products are likely to get good inflows and we've seen three years of outflows virtually. I mean I don't think there's any scope for outflows over the next two years because as it is the mutual fund industry is a very small part of the investable uh, universe of the investors so I don't think there can be any more uh, redemptions of the size that we had in 2010 and I would expect to see net inflows over the next few years. Mm-hmm.